In Ottoman history, Sultan Ibrahim I is known as one of the most extravagant rulers. Though he only ruled for a period of roughly eight years, his reign was defined by decadence, nepotism, sensuality, and, according to some, outbursts. Like many of the most captivating historical figures and celebrities, Ibrahim's life was tragic and curious. Born in Istanbul in 1615, he was a son of Sultan Ahmed I. Ibrahim succeeded his brother, Murad IV, after Murad passed in 1640. His reign quickly became notorious. Lascivious tales of Sultan Ibrahim I's decadence soon began to spread. His subjects whispered about Ibrahim I's polyamorous encounters and other stories of over-the-top decadence. He also displayed moments of cruelty that can be read alongside other shocking acts in history. A small disclaimer is necessary, however, outlandish Ottoman Empire stories about Sultan Ibrahim should be taken with a grain of salt. Some historians believe Ibrahim may well have suffered from mental illness, or that stories of his indulgence and peculiar ways were spread at the time of his downfall to discredit him and tarnish his memory. After all, his court and those of his predecessors and successors were unstable and divided into various political factions. They knew smear campaigns were a reliable way to oust a leader. And oust Ibrahim they did, he was executed in 1648, and the throne went to his young son, whether or not these stories are 100% true, they nonetheless contribute to the memory of Ibrahim I as an intriguing, tragic historical figure. 1. He spent many years of his life in a palace cage, in 1623, when his older brother Murad IV took the throne, eight-year-old Ibrahim was confined to a palace cage. But this wasn't a typical cage, the Ottoman caif, literally, cage, was a form of security for the reigning emperor, who locked away royal rivals or possible successors in a special part of the imperial palace. That way, they could be constantly monitored so as not to organize a coup or get into dangerous mischief. During accession struggles, it was not uncommon for sultans, or prospective heirs, to be slain. Indeed, Murad actually got rid of several powerful officials and three of his brothers, but decided to spare Ibrahim's life. By the time Ibrahim succeeded his brother to the throne in 1640, he had spent the better part of his life locked away in the cave. Two, when he was told he was the new sultan, he thought it was entrapment, Ibrahim lived in constant fear that his life was in danger. It was not an altogether irrational thought. After all, he saw his uncle and two brothers push and slay their way to the throne. So when Ibrahim's older brother, Murad, passed in 1640 and Ibrahim was informed he was the new sultan, he was skeptical, he had to see his brother's remains to believe it, since he was afraid his brother was testing him and would off him if he appeared too eager. 3. His health was often poor. And those around him took full advantage of his weakness, perhaps as a result of his years spent locked away in the cave, Ibrahim was constantly anxious that his life was in danger, and Ibrahim suffered from poor health throughout his relatively short adult life. He was allegedly diagnosed with neurasthenia, for example, due to his bouts of illness, his first grand vizier often made many political decisions for him. His so-called spiritual advisor, whom he turned to when he was ill, managed to wield significant power as well. For, his concubines wielded considerable influence, after being locked away for years, actually ruling the Ottoman Empire was likely the last thing on Ibrahim's mind. Instead he devoted much of his energy to his harem. Even there, Ibrahim was manipulated, since some of the harem women held considerable influence over the Sultan. He was reputed to sleep with 24 different concubines in a single day. Over the course of about seven years, his concubines bore him 18 children, he lavished goods and favors on his concubines and dressed them like queens in the finest silks and velvets. He also bestowed the elite title of royal consort on no less than eight concubines, and gave those women royal land and wealth he revoked from his sisters and niece. An Armenian concubine known as Sugar Cube, for her physique, was appointed governor general of Damascus. 5. Reacting to rumors of infidelity, he supposedly drowned two 78 concubines, Sekhar Para's quick rise in the harem ranks made her several enemies. She did little to win friends, 
She told Ibrahim everything, including a rumor that one of his concubines slept with someone outside of the harem. The rumor angered Ibrahim, and he launched a kind of inquisition to uncover the identity of the touched concubine. He then went to extreme measures, drowning 278 of his concubines in the Bosphorus Strait. He spared the lives of only two women, one of whom was none other than Sekarpara. 6. He redecorated his palace for play with groups of women, as Ibrahim retreated from politics, he turned increasingly to his harem for comfort and pleasure. His decadence was well known throughout court, one chronicler noted many of Ibrahim's peculiar tastes, like stuffing his pillows with luxurious furs and running around unclothed women in his garden. He even had a favorite concubine whose role it was to find and collect beautiful women for his harem. 7. His tastes were so decadent he taxed his ministers to finance his lifestyle, Ibrahim was a man of expensive taste, and he built a reputation as a decadent ruler. Moreover, his decadent tastes had a direct impact on the economy of the empire. He was said to drink amber in a cup of steaming coffee so frequently he drove up the price of amber, besides women, Ibrahim's true love was luxurious sable furs. He loved them so much he ordered hundreds of furs to carpet his harem and he shaved his cats, insisting they should wear capes of sable. His obsession increased the price of sable ten times over. To finance his obsession and pay for the furs, Ibrahim introduced taxes on his ministers and governors. With such behavior, some of Istanbul's political community would begin to turn on Ibrahim in the later years of reign. 8. He once kidnapped a girl and enslaved her for play, Ibrahim's debauched appetites made most fathers in the Ottoman Empire wary, especially fathers who were religious leaders. Such was the case of the Grand Mufti, whose daughter caught Ibrahim's eye, as the story goes, the father tried to deflect the emperor on his daughter's behalf, which enraged the sultan. Ibrahim supposedly kidnapped the girl, kept her in his harem as a sex slave for several days, then sent her back to her father. 9. He appointed lower-class people to high-ranking positions, Ibrahim was generous to his favorites, men and women with whom he was very close. He elevated a number of them by appointing them to important, distinguished positions in the empire. In one of the most dramatic honors, Ibrahim elevated a man from the position of bathkeeper to a general of the Genissaries, an elite unit of the household guards. 10. He disguised himself to personally inspect markets in Istanbul, though popular opinion insisted Ibrahim was a decadent and out-of-touch ruler, those accusations don't paint the entire picture. At least initially, Ibrahim indicated he was at least a little bit interested in ruling. There is perhaps no greater indication of this than the fact that he would disguise himself to inspect local markets in Istanbul and report to his Grand Vizier on his findings. 11. He had a peculiar way of dressing, which confused his subjects, besides sable furs, Ibrahim loved a variety of fabrics and fashions. He wove flowers in his hair, rather than donning the imperial turban at times, which invoked criticism from many of his subjects. He also wore a robe with precious stones as buttons, and was said to hang diamonds from his beard. 12. He dismissed and offed his grand vizier for traffic, a few years into Ibrahim's reign, rivals were plotting his downfall. Part of their assault against Ibrahim meant circulating propaganda to make the emperor appear unstable, one such story claimed that, in 1647, Ibrahim was riding through Istanbul and his path was blocked by a huge carriage. According to the story, he had an extreme reaction, he ordered his grand vizier to ban carriages from the city. When this didn't ease congestion, he yelled at the grand vizier, fired him, and unceremoniously ended him. In reality, some more complex political machinations were at play. But it's true that the grand vizier's life was taken. 13. His own mother betrayed him, Kozum Sultan, Ibrahim's mother, was a devoted ally, puppet master, and guard of her son for his entire life, they were locked up together in the caif, after all. While her son lost himself in the harem, she reveled in the unofficial power she amassed. But, as Ibrahim elevated favorite concubines, she slowly lost power, and Ibrahim briefly exiled her in 1647, after she had plotted to overthrow him, by 1648, 
Kozum regained some power, just in time for her son's downfall. Political schemes culminated in a rebellion by the Genissaries, who, with Kozum's sultan's support, imprisoned the sultan in his palace and formally deposed him in favor of his young son. 14. After an anguished return to the cave, Ibrahim was strangled, Ibrahim's mother supported his removal from power on the condition he would not be slain, but instead imprisoned once more in the cave. It was a tragic twist for Ibrahim, who returned to a cage where he first feared for his life. He spent ten days wailing in the cave. He was then unceremoniously strangled so he would not be a threat to his seven-year-old son's new throne. It was an ironic end for a man who began his life with the constant expectation of fear, Thanks for joining me on this exploration of the incredible life of Ibrahim I, the man who defied convention and lived an extraordinary existence in a cage. His story is a testament to resilience, human spirit, and the power of determination. Remember, history is filled with remarkable tales waiting to be discovered. If you enjoyed this journey through Ibrahim I's life, don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe for more fascinating stories from history. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and embrace the uniqueness of every story that makes our world so captivating. Thanks for watching.